A really great question that gets asked all the time is, how much music theory do I really need to play guitar? And the challenge with answering that question directly is, almost every guitarist has multiple roles. One day you might be a solo acoustic musician, another day you might be in a band, uh, another day you might be uh, a songwriter. And so within that context, there's a wide range of information that you'll be interested in based on the task at hand. Now, that doesn't mean there's not a core bit of knowledge we'd like to have uh, available to us at any time and be able to build on it. For instance, almost all guitarists want to know the name of a certain chord. That comes up more than, a, more than almost any other question. What chord is this? And so having a fundamental understanding of how to build a chord is going to be important. And of course, that's going to start with a major scale. And we all have a pretty good idea of major scales. We can go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And we can put a number as opposed to a letter to those. And that's going to let us move that same scale shape all over the, the fretboard, of course, taking uh, into account uh, crossing B strings. But we sort of start seeing that, yeah, there is a core information that, that if we have, we're in pretty good shape. And the major scale is a great starting point for it. And so recognizing certain notes as well, the notes on the G string and the notes on the A string, for instance, that's our C note right above it is a G, is going to help us an awful lot in what we're doing. In addition, appreciating the value of the third in our scale. So if we go back to our C major scale, C, D, E, E is our third. If we flatten the third, that gives a minor tonality. If we don't want to worry about major and minor, we can certainly use a power chord, which is just a first and a fifth. Now these are all music theory ideas. We use them all the time. Do you have to know the names? Do you have to know different ways of talking about it? Of course not. But we have to have either a very intuitive approach to what the meaning is or an ability to work out what we're really trying to do. Now, I don't have very intuitive skills. I tend to do things by definitions. But I'll tell you right now, music theory goes crazy after a while. There are names on names on names and five different ways to describe the same thing, all of which makes it hard to really get around a lot of the music theory pieces. So if we, again, keep our distillation process down, and we kind of remember, well, yeah, there's an open chord. In this case, it's a G. We can play it as a bar chord. We can move these all around. What are the minimum chords that we need to have at our disposal to appreciate a lot of different things? Well, I'm a huge fan of the uh, one, four, five associated with G because the shape series, we can have a G chord, we can have a C chord, we can have a D chord, and we can use those across a lot of different songs, uh, especially if we introduce a capo. Now, a capo is another way of uh, worrying about guitar theory uh, for ourselves. If we have an A being played and we wanted to move it, or sorry, we had a G being played and we wanted to move it to an A, well, we recognize we can just come up uh, two steps, but we need to put a capo in in order to uh, make that work for us. So a little bit of music theory is going to help us a long way in moving across different keys, uh, different uh, uh, organization of songs to help us out. And in fact, what's so nice about the GCD combo is, while the G chord is pretty easy to do, you'll notice we've got a, a two fingers on the bottom G chord, I can do a C just by dropping my fingers down, and I can make a D again just by uh, dropping another finger down. Now, of course, this isn't a true C, like a C major. It's a little bit of a cheat. It's more correctly called a C add nine. And even that's not a perfect uh, uh, sound for it because we don't need that to be anything other than E if we wanted it. And all these little nuances, they give us a little better understanding, but they can also cloud the issue. So if we sort of said to ourselves, hey, I want to learn the guitar quick, I don't want to spend a lot of time in theory. Calling that a G, calling that a C, calling that a D is going to be a really quick way of having the 1-4-5 combo and then applying a capo to move uh, up and down to whatever uh, uh, 
musical pitches we want to be able to work with, it's really going to help us a lot. So what we can see is we can make music fairly quick, maybe not the best, but we can make it pretty quick. And if we add just a little bit more to our knowledge, for instance, knowing that G is a good chord, um, an A would come next, we can have an A minor, we can have a B minor, uh, the C and the D are both major, um, we can go to an E, E is going to be minor. All of these give us additional tools to be able to express our music in more interesting ways. And everything beyond that, it's good for you, it's going to help a lot, it's going to give you a lot of good information. But in the same sense, if you're a songwriter, uh, you play always on your acoustic guitar, you don't need to know how to assemble an amplifier and all the cables or a mixing board uh, as part of your performance as part of a band or even as a solo acoustic musician. So there's going to be differences uh, based on our, our application of music that governs what things we want to have at our fingertips. Now I do like music theory. I spend a lot of time looking up little bits and pieces and working out the different ideas. But that's not everybody's cup of tea. The trick is to find those bits of music theory that are going to help you accomplish the goals you have and give you the enjoyment out of the music that you're trying to get.